Welcome to another milling training video from DAPRA, your provider of high performance, 100% American made milling tools. Today's topic is tool holders, and we're going to briefly cover some of our recommendations on what types of tool holders are a good choice depending on the type of application and the type of cutting tool being used. Not all tool holders are created equal. Each has its own set of strengths and weaknesses, so let's talk about them and how they work with your milling tool. Solid end mill holders have been around forever and are still a popular choice for many shops and not without good reason. They're very rigid, they don't cost much to purchase, and they're available in a variety of lengths. However, because the side lock set screw pushes the tool slightly off center when tightened, their concentricity is the poorest among the different tool holder types. The same design issue makes them inherently unbalanced, so they're not suitable for high RPM work where unbalanced tooling can cause vibrations, hurting tool life and finish, and ultimately causing premature spindle wear. Solid end mill holders are also dedicated in size, meaning that only one tool size is usable with each holder. Solid end mill holders are very good for roughing applications especially for indexable end mills where rigidity is most important. One of the features we like most about solid end mill holders is the availability of stub lengths like this one shown where the shank of the cutting tool ends up deep inside the spindle taper. This is much, much more rigid than a standard length holder like this one, especially for long reach end mills. The stub length tool holder can make all the difference in scenarios where chatter or vibration is a problem. ER collet holders are one of the more improperly used types of holders when it comes to milling applications. While their concentricity is good, the rigidity of this system is quite poor compared to other options when encountering the side loads of milling tools, especially indexable milling tools. Flex and chatter can occur affecting both part size and surface finish. Now on the plus side, ER collet holders can accept tools of various different sizes through the use of different size collets. This makes them versatile and cost effective, both for drilling and for light milling operations. Take care though to tighten the nut to the manufacturer's recommended torque spec to achieve the correct holding pressure. ER collets are relatively inexpensive in comparison to higher performing systems, but again, save ER collet holders for your drilling and light milling applications. Milling chucks are a good choice when rigidity and concentricity are important to a finishing or light roughing cut. The mechanical roller bearing system of these chucks provides very good clamping force on an end mill, and the sleeves used to fit the cutting tool do allow some variety in tool sizes per chuck. The downside to these tool holders is that they tend to be quite long, sacrificing rigidity, and also large in diameter, sacrificing part access in some cases. Milling chucks are also pricey, so we recommend reserving them for either solid end mills or finishing indexable tooling, where cutting is a bit lighter and part size and surface finish are the critical factors. Hydraulic chucks are a high performance tool holding option that provide very good concentricity and holding power. Additionally, they're among the easiest to use, requiring a simple turn of an Allen wrench to tighten or loosen. Their small diameter nose option provides good access for five axis machining and die and mold work. However, hydraulic chucks are expensive and are generally dedicated to one size diameter per holder making them a poor value in terms of flexibility. DAPER recommends using hydraulic chucks for tight tolerance, semi-finishing and finishing work, or for where part access is problematic for a larger holder and heat shrink is not an available option. Heat shrink tool holders provide an excellent combination of both rigidity and concentricity. They also offer a small nose diameter and long reach options that allow very good part access for die mold as well as five axis machining work. An inherently balanced design, these holders are best suited for fast RPMs of high speed machining with smaller diameter tooling. Heat shrink tool holders are medium in price, but the budget takes the biggest hit at the initial installation 
where a machine setup is required for heating and cooling of the cutting tool and tool holder assembly. These machines cost thousands of dollars, so the use of heat shrink is a serious commitment. Tool change times can be somewhat slow with this method, as wait times for heating and especially cooling can be long if special cooling adaptation isn't purchased. As with some of our other tool holder types, heat shrink is dedicated to one size per holder. Heat shrink tool holders are suitable for most roughing and finishing work. Finally, we finish with the mechanical shrink option for tool holders. Like heat shrink, mechanical shrink holders provide optimum gripping force and concentricity. Unlike heat shrink, mechanical shrink holders are versatile in that multiple tool sizes can be installed in the same holder by changing the collet size. Also, unlike heat shrink, the tool change time here is actually pretty quick. On the downside, mechanical shrink holders and systems are somewhat expensive, and part access isn't as good with the somewhat larger nose sizes. Mechanical shrink holders are suitable for both roughing and finishing applications. Here are just a few general suggestions for your tool holders to help you maximize performance and life. First, be sure to use the shortest tool holder that the job will allow. This will give you the most rigidity for the cutting tool, reducing chatter and vibration, and allowing the most aggressive machining parameters. If roughing, remember to use a stub length holder whenever possible to allow the end mill shank to have its base up inside the spindle gauge line. Since your tool holder and spindle combination is a precision assembly, Make certain that your tool holder taper is clean and free of debris before inserting into the machine setup. Similarly, take time periodically to reach up inside the spindle taper and wipe it out with a clean cloth. This will lengthen the life of your spindle and maximize tool holder performance. Regardless of this, however, your tool holders will wear out due to vibration, cutting forces, and heat that are present during a machining operation. As such, Watch for fretting on your tool holder taper and be sure to replace the tool holder when this becomes visible over a significant percentage of the taper surface. Here's a picture of what fretting looks like. Simply a copper sheen that develops like a rash on your tool holder's taper shank area. This is an indicator of corrosion and wear and signals a loss of good contact between the tool holder and the spindle taper. Continued use of a fretted tool holder can allow movement and vibration of the tool holder within the spindle taper, causing premature spindle wear, which is expensive to repair both in terms of the repair itself and due to the lost production while the machine is down. An often overlooked wear item is the pull stud that locks the tool holder into the machine spindle. This stud is responsible for locking the holder into place and over time will wear on the contact area indicated here. Visually inspect this area regularly and replace when wear is evident, generally every one to two years. Purchasing a good quality pull stud can help prevent major catastrophe within the machining area. Let's close with some final summary thoughts on tool holders. When roughing, especially with an indexable milling tool, it's hard to go wrong with a good quality solid end mill holder, especially in a stub length. For round tools or for light roughing or finishing with indexable tools, using milling chucks can be your best bet where part access isn't an issue and when the expense of a heat or mechanical shrink system is cost prohibitive. If the budget allows, the use of heat or mechanical shrink provides optimum tool holding for most milling tools and also tends to allow the best part access. Be careful using heat shrink for tools over one inch in diameter though, as the pressure per square inch may not adequately prevent the tool from slipping during heavy roughing operations. We based much of the information in this video on years of field experience with various types of tool holders while testing our milling tools. Hopefully you found our information helpful and will be able to apply some of what we've shared into your milling applications. Feel free to reach out to us with any questions or comments at info at and look for another milling training video from DAPRA coming soon.